Hi, my name's Joe Leffler. Most of you may remember me as Tricky the Clown from my first tape. Today we're going to do some more advanced balloons, and I think we're going to have a little bit of fun. So join me for some advanced balloons by Joe. Okay, we're going to start out with one that I did on the last tape, uh, the bumblebee, but I'm going to show you a couple of really interesting little changes in it. Number one is that after you do the bumblebee body and add the wings to it like this, if you now add one more bubble behind that and do an ear twist, it's about an inch and a half bubble. It makes the body of the bumblebee segmented and it makes it look much more like a bumblebee. What I've also done with this is I've taken 260, blown it all the way, left about an inch and a half, and do the six inch geo into the flower. Put your S twist for your leaves. The one inch bubble with an ear twist to give the, the neck of it the right angle. And then if you stretch the knot here just a tiny bit, you can add the bumblebee. to the top of the flower. Now you'll add your eyes. And of course, your stripes on the back. That's the bumblebee on the flower. It's very hard to find something for the guys, so I've come up with this. I think it's kind of cute. You leave about a half an inch before the color on a 321, put it all the way in and get a hold of it. Give it a little bit of a twist, leaving a bubble out on the end like that and sort of down at an angle. And then you split the twist in half like that. You take a long balloon, leave about, oh, a half an inch on the end of it and up about eight inches from it. You twist it and you insert this to it. You add a, another 260 that is not blown up or not inflated to the other end of it as a line. This will become a fishing pole. And finally, we're of course going to add our fish. You take an orange balloon or red for a red snapper, tie the end, cut off the excess, roll your knots to give yourself just a little extra airspace to work with, find the center, do one ear twist, followed by a second ear twist, cross the ends, Put it through so that it won't come undone. Add eyes to it. And attach it to your fishing pole. There you go, a fishing pole. And obviously I've caught my first one. The next one that we're going to do is a T-Rex. The boys like that. You inflate a, a, a green 260, leave about a three inch tip on the end, and you start by making two three inch bubbles. Tie the first one back to the second one. And then you will do two one inch bubbles so that you'll ear twist each of them. Those will become the eyes of the dinosaur. About another three inch bubble four-inch bubble, back on itself another four-inch bubble, and finally a, a third four-inch bubble that you will push through, and that gives you the body of your T-Rex and, of course, his tail. The arms and the legs for the T-Rex are made using a pop twist. You do a one-inch bubble, another one-inch bubble, and ear twist the one-inch bubble, and then bring the two bubbles back over the top of it like that so that you create two bubbles, pick up on it, and twist them a couple of times. That locks that to that. Later, we'll break that one. Eight or 10 inches down, you make another one inch bubble. Ear twist the one inch bubble, do it the same way. Come back over that, pull it up. This is gonna give it hands. A one inch bubble, another one inch bubble. Back over on that, bring it up. And then almost to the end for his leg or legs. Again, a one inch bubble, ear twist it, come back over it, and now we're gonna pop off all that we don't need. We're gonna get rid of this one. The one in the middle. And the little one on the end. Twist this in half.
That gives you his arms and you twist his legs in half. Tail up, a little shape to his legs by bending them and giving him a little pinch. Of course, you'll want to put a face on him. I'm sure you can come up with that, but that's the T-Rex. Hi, this is one that I do for the moms. Uh, it's a basket of flowers with a teddy bear. You blow a balloon up about, oh, I'd say three inches, tie it off, and you do what you can call an apple twist or a tulip twist, and you make a flower out of it by pushing it through, giving it a few twists, and then pushing the knot back up into the center so that you have a flower that looks like that. You take a 321, push it all the way in until you can get a hold of it at the other end and bring that end clear out. I've made a couple of extra ones here that we can add to it. You twist that around what you've pulled, what you pulled out, and push that back into the center again. That gives you a little vase of flowers. I take a white one, put a one-inch bubble on it. You inflate it all the way, leave about a quarter to a half an inch on it. Put a one-inch bubble, fold it in half, put a one-inch bubble on the other end of it, bring it down through the hole, and out around so that you create the handle for your basket. And now you add the flowers to the basket. That can be as it is, or you can do what I like to do, adding a teddy bear. Most of you know the teddy bear is about a one and a half, a one, a three inch bubble, a one inch bubble, a one and a half inch bubble, a one inch bubble, and a three inch bubble for his head. Twist that together, push his snout through. We, of course, covered this on the first tape. Ear twist the two outer bubbles. Make a one-inch bubble, put it through, bring it around. And just loop it over to give him a little bit of a tail in his hind legs. If you want to be sure it doesn't come undone, push his tail through that way. I always put a face on them. You can make the face that you like, but there's the basket of flowers with a teddy bear on it. The next one we're going to do also appeals to the girls. We're going to do another teddy bear, again, about a one-inch one bubble, one-and-a-half-inch bubble, rather, a one-inch bubble, a three-inch bubble, a one-inch bubble, a one-and-a-half-inch bubble, followed by a one-inch bubble, followed by a three-inch bubble, and, of course, take the two threes and bring them together, push the nose through, and twist the two one-inch bubbles on the top of the ears. Most of you should be very familiar with that. I'm going to do a one-inch bubble and a loop about four inches on a side, like that. I'll do exactly the same thing to my blue bubble, to my blue balloon. One and a half, a one inch bubble, three inch bubble, a one inch, a one and a half, a one inch, a three inch, and again, make another teddy bear's head on the second bubble. Ear twist his ears. Take the remaining portion of the balloon and push it down through what you've just made and do a one inch bubble and fold it in half and take the other base and push it through. Now you're going to give each of the teddy bears bodies by doing about a three inch bubble and a four or five inch bubble and a tail on the one and the same thing exactly on the other side. And now you bring them together into the middle like that so that the two teddy bears are hugging one another. I also like to take, and if you'll recall from the first tape, we did the doves in the heart. We'll make a heart out of the red balloon. Do it in the middle, roll it over your fingers. By stressing the outside of the balloon this way, I've also found if you blow on it, the heat will weaken the balloon. It gives you a heart. You situate your teddy bears. In the middle of the heart like that, you've got the teddy bears in a heart. If you wish, after putting the faces on, you can tie their nose together. And instead of just kissing, hugging, they're kissing. That's the two teddy bears in the heart. We're going to do a basic cartoon character body. We start out with a one-inch bubble like this, followed by a four-inch bubble another four inch bubble and a third four inch bubble which you will roll through that gives you the head of the creation 
We're going to duplicate that at the other end by squeezing out all the air to the other end, doing a one inch bubble. Gives you kind of a barbell looking effect. Now we're going to add some arms to him. We start out exactly the same way with a one inch bubble and a four inch bubble. Bring the four inch bubble back and create a hand and then just push the bubble through to lock it in place. Squeeze the excess air to the end and do the reverse on the opposite end, a one inch followed by a four inch, another four inch, push it through to lock it. Find the center and do a pinch twist in the center like that, probably about a two inch pinch. And you add that at the top of his body to give him his arms. Now we'll do some legs for him. And I kind of like to do, oop, I've lost it here. Sorry about that. I kind of like to make the legs look a bit like a duck's legs, so I do a three inch bubble followed by about a one and a half and another three. Bring it back like this it, do a one inch bubble and an ear twist, and it sort of gives him the webbed looking foot. Again, you'll push the air almost all the way out. You have to leave a little bit so that you can tie it. Do a three inch, a one and a half, and another three. Tie it back on itself. Again, a one inch bubble and ear twist it. Find the center, and we'll add this to the bottom to the body. At the bottom, we'll turn his feet around, of course, so that they're to the front. I like to add a little bit of figure to them or a little contour to them by pinching them. We'll now add eyes to him, and some people prefer to paint the eyes or draw the eyes directly onto the blue. I like to add an eye to them. So about a four-inch bubble, followed by another four-inch. Break it off and retie it so it's at the length that you need it to be. Find the center of that, twist it, and put it around his head, bringing the ends up and tying it around the one inch bubble. The second one done the same way and then tie those two, lot, two pieces of bubble remaining balloon together in order to keep them in place and bring the two eyes out to the front like that so that you have the eyes there. Now, of course, we have to add to that a bill or a beak. Do that by folding it in half at about six inches. Twist it several times. Make another loop about half the size and then make two more loops about a quarter the size each. Maybe about an inch and a half inch to two inch pinch twist and break the rest of the balloon. Take that and tie it around many times as need be just to get rid of that extra rubber and of course that seals it. Then you put that on and there's your cartoon duck. Using the very same body style that we use to make the duck this you can change the entire look of it by simply making wings on him instead of instead of arms and hands. Now I like to again add some contour to my wings by folding them and giving them a little bit of pinch. Those you add to the same place that you would put the wings or put the arms rather on the duck and you do that. On this one I would do just the eyes on him. I also want to make feet for him the same way I did as the other only instead of the webbed feet I make them much like I do the arms for the duck. About a four inch bubble on each side and back. Find the middle and add the arms to the bottom or the legs rather to the bottom. Again, give them a little contour. Now this particular one is going to be a stork. So I'm going to make a different kind of a bill entirely than I would a duck. I do maybe about 10 inches like that, do a single loop twist, 
followed by a second loop twist. I'm going to break off all the excess as I did before and tie this around till I've gotten rid of the excess. Now that's the stork. Now you can leave him just like that or if you're at some sort of a, like a baby shower you can do a one inch in a pink or a blue, about a four inch, five inch, another one. Do the third one just as you had done with the beginning of the body, like that. Go to the other end, bring that back down around and tie it here around the one inch bubble at the base of the one inch bubble so the one inch bubble is still there. Then grab the nipple of the one inch or the end that you blow and do an ear twist. Bring that back around and put it back inside like that. At that point you have like the head of a baby and you can put a face on that. Find the center of the top and do one twist so that you, you have the center. Come out to the end. Make a one inch bubble. Add the bassinet to it. And there's your stork. We're going to make a little bird at this point. We'll start out with the same basic body style type that we did with the last one, where you do a one inch bubble, followed by a four, again with another four, another four. This time you'll roll it through as we did with the last one. But this time we're going to do something different. We're going to give him some cheeks. So you'll do the a, a, a pinch twist, another pinch twist. Then we're going to basically duplicate the body immediately beneath the pinch twist by doing about a four inch bubble, another four inch bubble, four inch, about a one inch on the end of it and roll it through. That gives you the body with the head. Now I like to put the eyes on him again on the outside so you need about a four inch bubble, another four inch bubble, break off the excess and tie it. And we'll do the eyes exactly as we did on the other bird. Find the center of it here on the duck. Find the center of it. Wrap it around like that. Give it a twist so that it'll stay. Bring it up and tie the ends around the base of the one inch bubble. And then to be sure that they stay, tie the two of them together. Bring the eyes back out to the center that way and readjust. Now I do kind of a neat little trick with this to give him a beak and also give him legs. I make that out of the same balloon. I inflate the balloon all the way to the end. I make about a one and a half inch bubble. Let the rest of the air out of the balloon. Tie it off at that point. Reinflate the balloon to make his feet. Leave about three to three and a half inches between the bubble and the end. Do a one inch bubble, a four inch bubble, another four inch bubble. Push it through so that it stays. A one and a half, a one and a half, a four, another four, a one inch bubble, another one inch bubble, and then pop off the end of it, but keep your little piece. Tie this bubble off and push it through so that it stays. Add the feet. And you just take the beak, wrap it around several times, and there's your little pink bird. We're going to make a rainbow now, and we're going to start out by inflating three white balloons almost all the way to the end, leaving just a little tip, then tying the three together or twisting the three together like that, and then you will simply braid them, a tight braid, all the way down. When you get to the end, you twist it again. This will be our cloud. We'll turn around and make six balloons of different colors. I start with red always at the outside. Put it into the one side. And then so that they're all going to be pretty much in the same plane, I put it to the opposite side of the balloon so that we have it there. Now we'll do the second one, which will be orange. We'll place it in the opposite hole 
and bring it over to the opposite side over here. Push it down through till they're about the right size with one another. You may have to do some bending to straighten. And then I break off the end and tie it to the right length. I will do the same with each of the other colors all the way until I have the look of the rainbow that I want. The yellow one next and again I'm alternating from side to side as I do this in order to give it symmetry. Again, it's broken off. By the way, I'll bring up a point. You'll notice me at the moment throwing pieces on the floor. At a show, I would never do that. I'd have an apron on and all those pieces go into a pocket in the apron uh, so that there aren't any pieces for a child to get a hold of. And at the end of my performance, I make absolutely positively sure that I pick up all the little pieces parts that are laying around. The last thing you want is for a child to get one and get it in his mouth and choke on it. So be very careful that you don't leave any pieces parts laying around at the conclusion of your show. It's very, very important. That's the rainbow. You can, of course, if you wish, decorate it by putting a heart over here and a heart over here on the other end. But that's your basic rainbow. There are a lot of people who do the motorcycle. This is my version of it. I hope you like it. You blow up one balloon, leaving about oh, an inch and a half, and then squeeze it to soften it a little bit. Find the center. Do about a one inch bubble in the black balloon and wrap that around that center. This is kind of a difficult thing to do because of the way you have to hold it. And unless your hands are fairly sizable, it takes a little bit to hold this balloon in place. But you'll roll the balloon around. Bring the two red ones down over the end, twist it a couple of times like that, and that gives you a wheel. Now I've already done another one of those, and I've done one of these where I've tied another bread balloon in half to itself, end to end. I'm now going to find the center of that, make a figure eight, and lock it in place by going through. Take this wheel. put it into my frame like that. As I said, I've already made another wheel exactly like it. That will go into the back here. Now we have to make the handlebars in the tank. And the tank you'll make by finding about half of the distance up on the back one. Twist that in half. Twist it immediately under the handlebars, bringing it back around towards the back wheels again. Squeeze the excess air out of the one and then Roll the knot to give it a little more on the other one, and place the ends of those back down into the piece that comes from the back of the tank. That leaves you your two for your handlebars. You'll notice one is considerably longer than the other. That is somewhat intentional. You push the air out into that one, and again, release it here. You take the longer of the two, do about a one or a one and a half inch bubble, which you will ear twist. This is probably the hardest twist on the entire thing because in if it's going to break, that's kind of where it will. That becomes your headlight. Uh, you can tell by the way I make the handlebars, the era from which I come, because I like to put the configuration of the old ape hangers, we used to call them, from back in my generation when I rode motorcycle. That gives you the handlebars. Now, the next thing that we'll do, I'll set this off to the side. I'm going to take another balloon, leaving about three inches on the end, and make what almost amounts to a teddy bear's head. A three-inch bubble, a one-inch bubble that ear twists, about an inch and a half bubble, a one-inch bubble that you ear twist, and a three-inch bubble. Bring the two three-inch bubbles together in the center, tie a knot. You'll do another one-inch bubble there, which you will ear twist. And that gives you kind of an old-style Harley-Davidson buddy seat. That goes in at the crotch at the back right here behind the tank and over the rear that goes down to the tire. Bring it down to the center here and do a one-inch bubble and ear twist that. Now, the reason for the one-inch bubble is so that when you push the kickstand through to the other side and you make a bubble on the other side, it keeps the frame fairly straight. 
You get to the other side, you're going to do another one inch bubble, another ear twist, point it in a downward direction. Now that's way too long, so you break off the end of it, let it back to about the right length, and tie it off. That gives you the kickstand for your motorcycle. Now I'm going to lay this off to the side. You can stop right there with the motorcycle if you so desire, but I like to really go crazy with it and put a rider on it. So we'll start with the rider right now. You start out with a heart balloon. Soften the heart considerably. Tie it, but leave the knot loose. I need a yellow balloon I forgot to get. We'll use red instead. Blow the red balloon up. Do a series of four one and a half inch bubbles. And make a loop out of them by tying them back together. Take your scissors and cut off the other end so that all the air comes out of the piece that's left. Tie it back opposite and tight enough that it will stay. Now you take your heart, roll the knot to get yourself some extra and create a nose by taking one lobe of the heart and giving it a twist to make the nose. Take the four bubbles, twist them several times in the middle, go over the nose. Some people like to do this with just one and put a bubble in each one of them and make Barney Google eyes, but I like to do the eyes that way. To make the hands, you inflate a balloon leaving about one inch. Do the one bubble, the four inch bubble or so, another four inch, roll the one inch through. Do the same on the opposite end. Find the center. We'll now attach the head. Stretch it, bring it around and tie it. Now all we need to do is add the legs. We've got that the same way. You're going to leave about a one and a, about a three quarter to one inch here. You're going to squeeze out the extra air to that end. Roll your bubble here and squeeze it there. Back here to about a six inch loop. Then you place his head over that and you bring this leg over and push it through. The other leg over and push it through. Pull these all the way down, fairly tight, and center his head. Once again, I like to give a little contour to his arms, so I do that. Those are his legs. Straighten his body out there, make them fairly even. And now we'll add him to the motorcycle by simply spreading his legs over the seat, putting one leg in on each side of the frame on the bottom in order to hold him in place. And then put his hands onto the handlebars. And there's your happy motorcycle rider. Okay, this we're, we're going to make a Christmas wreath. I know it's a little out of season, but you'll eventually get there. I'm going to start with three green balloons, all inflated almost to their end. Twist them together, and instead of braiding them this time, I'm going to do what I call just twisting them together. You hold them between your legs like this, and you just twist them so it makes a spiral all the way up to the end. Twist them again. Bring that end down around and twist all the ends together. It doesn't matter if the ends are longer or shorter until you have your wreath. Now, to make this really nice for Christmas, you could leave it like that, or you can take a yellow balloon. Near the end like this, leave just a tip. Do about a one inch bubble. Come down below that, break it off. Tie it so that you just have about that much little bubble left. I believe I've dropped my white balloon. Oh, here it is. You take the yellow and tie that to the white. Do 
like almost an apple twist. You push it into the balloon, get a hold of it, push the, the knot in, get a hold of the knot, give it a little twist like that. That gives you the flame for your candle. Then about a three inch bubble, a pinch twist, another pinch twist, and a third pinch twist. Sort of looks like a three leaf clover around the bottom of it. Break off the excess. Bring your candle into the center of the balloon. Twist it around several times. Using your three leaf clover, center the candle in the balloon. Now, you can stop right there very simply, but I like to add several other things to it. One is taking the yellow one that I've already broken off and a red one, getting all the stretch that I can out of the balloon, bringing it back to about, make a big loop, find the center of the big loop, bring that into the middle like that. Take the remaining piece of the yellow that you have left, wrap that several times around the center of your red ribbon, bring it up to the top, simply use it to tie it on any place that you wish. Straighten your ribbon out on the front. Now, I also like to do something else that I think is really neat. It's a series of one inch bubbles. You bring them back on themselves. We'll just do three. You can do more than that if you would like. After you have done the three inch bubbles, you tie them, break them off, retie the balloon. Do another three in, another three of uh, one inch bubbles. Bring it back. Tie that. Whoop. Well, since we lost that end, we'll go with just two. And you have your holly berries, and you can put those around on your wreath almost anywhere that you wish. And that's your Christmas wreath with ribbon, candle, and holly berries. Thanks much. I enjoyed doing this. This and other tapes are available at any of your favorite magic shops.